Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is 13th Street Crew, where you and up to seven other players are going to attempt to work for the old Don. The Don is basically the pseudo controller of the city and you and the 13th crew are in the lower rungs of the criminal underbelly. You, along with your allies and or maybe even one informant, are trying to make 15k, because if you can do that you can impress the Don and get yourself up in the ranks. However, you only win if you get to 15k. It doesn't matter who else makes it to 15k as long as it's not the informant. And you're going to go through a bunch of jobs, whether it be small solo jobs, basic jobs, and of course the big jobs, trying to obtain assets as well as just straight cash. Each time you're going to need to require, have a required amount of resources to do so, and of course make sure that no police meet you at the scene. And if you can do so, you'll score a take as well as hopefully an asset. Go throughout a number of rounds until somebody makes that cash and wins the game or the informant busts you in the game 13th Street Crew. Let's talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and then of course our review. Setting up the game 13th Street Crew is actually quite simple. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to decide how many players you're playing the game with. And then you're going to take a number of loyal crew members plus one and you're going to add an informant card to that deck of cards. So in a four player game you should have five loyal crew cards and one informant. You will then shuffle those cards and deal one to each player. After you've done so, you're going to return the rest of the identity cards back to the game box, which may be used again later in the game. Then, you're going to set out the job cards. You have solo jobs, small jobs, and big jobs. Shuffle each of the decks and then place out three face up down the line in each of the rows. Take a, a resource deck, it's going to be the, uh, I guess, the grayish yellow one, and shuffle it up and then place it face down and give each player three resources. Take the police action deck, put in all clear cards, 23 of them, and two police action cards, and shuffle them up. You should have a deck of 25 cards, and place it on the left hand side of the game board. Each player should receive two police action cards, one all clear, and one police presence. After each player has their three resource cards, their two police action, or the two uh, police action cards, that's either an all clear or police presence, and their identity, uh, then all you have to do is set aside the tokens and go ahead and begin the game. Gameplay for the 13th crew is quite simple. The first thing you do is you'll select one player, maybe the person who has the biggest rap sheet, and they're going to go first. Everybody should also check their identities. Normally speaking, you're going to be a loyal crew member. However, one of you may be an informant, and this can change throughout the game. If you're a loyal crew member, you're just trying to get to 15k. You don't care if anybody else does as well, as long as it's not the informant, provided that you do so on the last job. That's all that matters. The informant has two ways of winning. Either they get to 15k on their own, or they have five police presents get revealed, whether it be through the deck or from the police actions that the players present out onto the game board. The first player is going to start by resetting any assets. Now there are two types of assets in the game. There are one-use assets and there are assets that you can use throughout the entire game. Resettable assets are actually going to have a, um, it'll, it'll have like a darker hinge to the area that is on the very far bottom left hand side. In this case it'll also be a resource and this is going to be a gun resource which you can use for the rest of the game. These get reset by flipping them back from face down to face up. Any other type of assets are just used once and then they are discarded back to the game box. After you've reset any assets that you may or may not have, you're going to move on to drawing a resource card. Everyone starts with three resources, and at the beginning of your turn you're going to draw one resource. These resources are all going to be different colored symbols or markers which you'll be using to take on jobs, whether it be solo jobs, small jobs, or big jobs. After you've drawn, you're going to choose to either pass or you can propose to do a job. If you pass, you are going to take a resource card and each other player will take a resource card from the deck. This basically increases the amount of resources everyone has, so it makes it easier for them to attempt to take the next job on, especially if you want to do a small or a big job. You need a lot of resources to do this. However, if you feel like everybody has enough resources and you want to attempt a job, you can do so. When you ask, you say, I'm going to attempt a job, you're then going to de de determine if you want to assemble a crew. If you're doing a solo job, you don't. You just take it on yourself, you pay the assets if you need to, etc., etc. But when you do the small and the big jobs, you have to assemble. For a small job, you have to do at least two or more players, and for a big job, you have to do at least three or more players. A job looks like this. The very top portion is going to be the resources required in order for the job to even be attempted. 
then you're going to have the take, whether it be the crew's take or the lead's take. Take is basically money that you'll acquire if the job is completed and the police don't show up. And then finally at the bottom, it might be an asset, which if it is, the player who attempted the mission, who determined to do it, like the leader of this specific mission, will get to keep this. However, otherwise, it's no use to you as long as you got the money. After you've determined who you want to go with, you say, hey, Bill, I want to go with you and Sam. You have to at least be able to assemble that specific crew. If they say no, then that's it. You're done. If you can get those crew members on, though, then you're going to be able to attempt to hopefully get the resources completed. So you'll go around, starting with you, and you'll place any resources that you can for attempting the mission. So if the mission required two blue, two yellow, and a red, and you had two blue and a yellow, you place those down. The next player who is on your mission will have to place a yellow and a red down if they can. You can't choose to not play them, and you can't play more than is needed, but you have to play what is available to you. It doesn't matter if you're an informant or not. As soon as the mission requirements have been met, you stop, and nobody else is needed. And if the required mission um, resources are not met, then it's a fail. It's a bust, no one gets nothing, and it moves to the next round. If you get all those resources met, then you're going to move on to the police action phase. This is where players are going to take one of their cards, and it's always going to be either police presence or all clear, and you can choose and put it down into, the, into a pile. So if I was playing with me and Bill and Steve, and I was a good guy, I'd place a police uh, presence or police action all clear, and then they would go ahead and choose as well. And you're gonna be doing this face down, it's like a secret thing. So this player would place one of these, and then this player would look at their hand, okay, and choose one of these. And then finally, the police action deck is going to be drawn from and put into this stack here. And you're going to shuffle them up to make sure that you don't know who put what in and reveal. Now there are only two police presents in this entire 25 card action deck, so it's very unlikely it's gonna be the deck, but it can be used for some specific situations to kind of throw away blame. And you'll go, okay, all clear, all clear, all clear, all clear, wonderful. If all clears have been met, the mission will pass and you will gain a take. If there's at least one police presence card that is going to fail the mission, you will take the police presence and put it in a pile. And if there are ever five police presence in a pile, the game is over, the informant wins. However, in this case, all clears were met. So everybody's just gonna get an all clear card back because we all know that they were putting all clears in and you'll discard one of them to the police action discard pile and then gain the bonus. In this case here, it would be the crew will take two and the lead will take 1000 and you'll take the resources from the stack here. And then after that, you will pass to the next player and they will do the same thing. They'll untap their assets. They're going to draw a resource card. They'll attempt to choose a mission. And if they need to, they'll select a crew. That crew will attempt to put resources resources in if they can, and if they do, they'll move on to being attempting the police action uh, portion of it, and if there's no police presence, success, and you'll gain a take. And that would be how the game goes. You'll move along the game until one or more players gets to 15k, and the game will end that way, or if five police presence cards have been placed out in a pile, meaning that five have been failed due to the police making it there. The informant is doing some dirty stuff. In which case, the game will end as well. And that's how you play the game, the 13th Crew. Yeah, pretty simple. Let's talk about my review. So 13th Street Crew is a mix of a deception-based game and a game about greed. You're not really working with anybody, but you're also working with everybody. You need to work to get the most money, pick the jobs that are going to give you the best opportunity to score as many points as possible, and hit 15k. You can work it out, so you try and work with other players to all get to 15k at the same time, but somebody who might be greedy or might assume that you might actually be the informant might uh, get scared off. Now remember though, if you're the informant and everybody gets 15k along with you, you will lose. You only win as the informant if you get to 15k before anybody else or if five police actions are thrown down. However, if you're playing as the good guys, you also don't want other people to get to 15k, even if they're on the good side, the loyal street crew, if you're not gonna get there. So you might actually start doing some dirty stuff, even adding the police to the deck to prevent players from instantly winning the game uh, and not having you go along. And so they have to be very specific as to who you choose and what specific types of jobs you're going to give. Sometimes it's better to actually make the crew get a larger take than the leader. If the leader is at 13 and the leader can gain a one and the crew can gain a two, that might be a job the crew would actually let you do. However, there are solo jobs which will eventually allow the leader to score on their own and win the game by themselves. So you can literally 
kind of be a traitor, even when you're not actually a traitor. The informant is just basically working with the cops, which gives them an extra win condition, but also a negative condition when it comes to scoring that 15K. Each of the jobs is unique and has their own benefits for the, either the crew's take or the leader's take. The assets that you can use are basically like resources that can be used once a turn, which makes it very lucrative to pick that player. Whereas the other assets are kind of a one-time use. It might allow you to switch your identity. It might allow you to gain additional money. Maybe you can look at somebody else's identity. These are things that can typically happen anywhere. There's also ways in which the game can give you additional money every turn, once a turn. And that can put a target on your back if you're not careful. This game usually plays roughly about 30 to 60 minutes, but if you want to make the game a little faster, the rules indicate that there are a few cards that can do that to make that happen. You can just start with them and play, one of them being that during everybody's turn, you get $1,000, which sets a timer on the clock, which is not actually a terrible idea for your first gameplay. I like deduction games, I like trader games, I like games about like deception and greed and that kind of stuff, and this has kind of a little bit of all of that stuff. It's also a way to make other players, even when no one is the bad guy, the informant, uh, per, per, it presents a unique challenge to the other players because they might think somebody's the informant, but actually that person is just scared they might not make it to that 15K with everybody else. And no one is gonna wanna bring everybody in, especially if maybe the informant gets put into a group because now police presence is gonna get dropped and everybody loses resources. It is a game of tense, deduction and like treachery all mixed into one. It's a really unique game. I've seen games that have little elements of different things in this game, but this game kind of presents all those elements and kind of puts them together. There's the identity aspect to the game. There's the resources that get thrown in that you need to like meet. And then there's additionally things that can happen with the cops that could pop up. And of course the assets being a nice little twist to everything. The artwork is solid, the gameplay is fun. I like playing this with obviously at least four or more players, the more the merrier because it gets so intense. And yes, there's only one informant regardless of the number of players, but that doesn't stop the treachery and there can always be unique things that can happen in the game. Overall, the 13th Street Crew is a ton of fun. If you like deduction and you like greed and you like like all that kind of stuff, then this is something I strongly recommend you take a look at. Links down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game 13th Street Crew. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there's a link down below, like I said before. You can also, if you want, and if you feel obliged, and if you think we've earned it, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more of our videos that we present every day, Monday through Friday, and once on Sunday for our live stream, 6.30 p.m. PST, and on Wednesdays we do whatnot. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to joining your crew next time.